Hello and welcome to another update. I have split the map into three parts. The first one is the actual updates and the Russo-Ukraine war in general. Second one is supply lines, which I have made clearer now so that no one wonders where they are. And finally, the positions of the different armies. Now, I've made it so that I, we see Ukrainian defensive positions as well as a Russian axis of advance so that we have a better overview of what's actually happening on the front line. Now, these two cobbled together allows us to see where things are happening and how they're happening. And with the third one, we can see what the tactical strategy is around the different front lines. Now, if we remove this for clearer overview of the situation, we see that in the Kherson front, there are two axes of attack from the Russian army, where one is between Alexandrivka and Lupareve, where they're trying to attack Mikolaev from the south, as I predicted in an earlier video, where I saw that with a Russian push from the south, as well as from the east, and an explosion cutting off the supplies from the bridges across Mikolaev, it will allow the Russians to encircle the city uh, by attacking from these two fronts. So currently the goal of the Russian army is to push through these coastal villages and reach uh, Mikolaev from the south, while at the same time breaking through this village defensive line of uh, Kiselivka, Kvitneve, Pervomaiske and Bilosirka. Uh, this, these four villages are a one straight defensive line that the Ukrainians are uh, defending as a last defensible line from this highway, which means that if this line falls, then there's nothing between the Russian advance and Mykolaiv, similarly to the sibersk bakhmut line and the uh, kramatorsk slavyansk uh, konstantinivka line. Essentially, this is the last step between the Russian advance and Mykolaiv. Now, further to the east, uh, around Saporizhia, we see that the only Russian advance is towards uh, Hulyaipole, while there's most likely gun-going shelling on the rest of the front line that we just aren't uh, listening to as much, uh, as it isn't really that important. And by showing the supply lines, we can see that the goal is most likely to follow this uh, tr train trail rag railway track to reach Saporizhia from the east and to, at the same time in the future, advance from uh, the west as well uh, to kind of pincer the Ukrainian defensive line and cover it from two sides. Now, in the Donbass region, we see that the main push is happening around uh, well, in the Donetsk front, there are five axes of attacks, but the main ones are around Marinka, uh, Vuladar, and Piski, where the Russians are trying to break through the defensive lines on these, these three points, where they will attempt to break through and uh, make use of that. <clears throat> if they can couple a breakthrough from Marinka with Vuladar or Marinka with Piski, that way they will be able to essentially uh, pincer a large Ukrainian defensive force as they will force them into an open field where they can uh, attack them as they are retreating or simply encircle them by running around. Other than that, there are two more important points. One where they are attacking northwards from Oleksandropil, which is towards Konstantinivka, which is most likely to cut off the supply lines going to Bakhmut. And the other one is... Uh, at Novosilka Druha, where they are pushing westwards towards Krasnohorivka, and this is in an attempt to connect with the push at Piski and encircle Evdivka, which is a significant defensive city, which has a significant proportion of the Ukrainian defenders in this area, and taking this would be the second Popasna. Now onwards to the Siversk Bakhmut line, we see that there are four pushes here. Uh, four axes of attack, for the, where the first one is going to be around Kodema, where the Russians will push uh, westwards from the, the recently captured city uh, village of Kodema, and attacking uh, Mykolaiv Katruha, Uotradivka, as well as Saitseve, 
uh, from the southeast and pushing northwards towards Bakhmut and taking this area around the main highway. At the same time, we see fighting in the streets of Bakhmut on the outskirts and the eastern outskirts of it, as well as pushing towards Pithorodne from the uh, east towards the west. Uh, and finally, around Solidar, we see that the push is still ongoing. Uh, Bakhmut is still contested, but it's mostly taken by the Russian allied forces. And they are pushing and fighting from street to street uh, around the city of Solidar itself, pushing towards uh, the Ukrainian defensive positions. I think currently they are having a stalemate where they're waiting for the, the battle around Yakulivka to finish before they push uh, eastwards towards uh, westwards from the east towards Solidar to flank the Ukrainian defensive position as it may be well protected and difficult for the Russians to advance towards it. There was a recent report stating that the reason why the Russians aren't uh, attacking Bakhmut as well as Siversk is because they see that the current defensive line allows the Ukrainians to maneuver well and essentially cause more casualties than the Russians are willing to pay for these uh, cities, meaning that in general we'll see them pushing on the front line and making a better, making for themselves a better position to allow them to uh, take less casualties as they push for these cities. Most likely what they're do, trying to do is create some kind of three-way uh, operational encirclement. So pushing from the south as well as the north at the same time and taking this position and bombing it from three sides rather than the one side that they're currently doing it from, uh, from the east. So essentially they want to take uh, Pitorodne, Krasnohora, Blahodatne, Solidar, as well as Opitne, Vesiladolina, Setseve, Utradivka and Mikulaik Fedruha before they start storming Bakhmut. As far around the Siversk line, we'll see them trying to take Serebryanka, Vayimka, Ivanodarivka, Vesele, and Bilohorivka, as well as Yakorivka, before they start attacking Siversk. Uh, as for the Isium front, we see that there's one major push going towards Barvinkov, which is the main, main supply route of uh, the Ukrainian defenders in the Donbass region, meaning that essentially what we're seeing is some kind of uh, intentional breakthrough of the Ukrainian defense in this area that is well defended to try and cut off the supplies to the Donbass region, allowing the Uk uh, Russians to push towards Slovyansk as well as uh, the general Donbass region. Uh, as they are currently fighting in the area, meaning that uh, essentially what they want to do is weaken the reinforcing ability of the Ukrainians and cutting off the Donbass region from supplies. And finally, it's fairly silent in the Kharkiv region. A small addition is that there has been an airstrike or a rocket attack on uh, this position, which is geolocated by Rybar, uh, and it is said to be a mercenary or a foreign legion base for the Ukrainian foreign legion as well as a ammo depot next to Avdivka here to the south, uh, northwest of Avdivka. As you can see, this warehouse has been struck by an artillery barrage, also uh, geolocated by a Riber. So generally, we see a general frontal assault on every front line uh, in every region, except for Kharkiv currently, and a general attack on uh, important positions from the air and artillery to we further weekend the Ukrainian defenders. And I hope you like the new map and let me know if you have any ideas to uh, what I could improve on it. And finally, as a final note, uh, I've updated my outline for the possible Russian goals as I see that they will try to take everything east of this line here uh, as their goal for this uh, invasion. That's it for this video. Make sure to leave a like and have a great day. See ya.